Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Daphne Ayas, and I'm the new director of Vitterevit. Welcome, you all. It's wonderful to see all of you. Um, here we are um, at Vitterevit, mostly teaming up with artists, writers, and thinkers from all across generations, so they can actually create new work um, in the forms of exhibitions, in the forms of presentations and books. And um, essential to this is actually to be able to go to go to all kinds of directions. So we're really interested in the mercurial possibilities as we're exploring the realms between art, architecture, urbanism and literature here. So it's great to see actually this crowd. I know some of you, not all of you, but um, obviously there's a lot of interdisciplinary interest here and a lot of people who've been thinking how to crack open the art world and sort of interface it vis-a-vis -vis different disciplines. Um, in order to do so, we started teaming up with a number of uh, Rotterdam-based institutions. So tonight we have Print Room on our side, um, and we have Delphine Bedell, who is an artist and a curator and a publisher who will be the respondent of the evening. Um, of course, we're here for Unink uh, as well, and he's our key speaker this evening. Uh, welcome, Unink. Uh, <laughs> he, is, um, he, he is one of the really leading creative minds of China. I mean, he's an activist, he's an artist, he's an editor, he's a blogger, he's a cultural um, figure, a creative mind of all sorts. So in that sense, it's really inspiring to have him here because what I'm noticing in my first few weeks in Rotterdam, or in Holland rather, how our fields have become so compartmentalized that we're not really speaking to each other too much. So in that sense, I think Onin could be actually a big inspiration for us as well. Obviously, some of us are interested in China, but we haven't, in, you know, we haven't invited him just for his China intelligence. We really want to hear also how he is moving between different fields swiftly and smoothly. So in that sense, thank you again. And I'm looking forward to what you have to say. Thanks, Stephanie. I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I'm going to share some idea and experience um, about uh, the cultural production and social engineering. Um, let's start from the politi uh, political situation in China in a uh, in different period. Um, so today, the um, China, ch the Chinese society has a great change compared to the Cultural Revolution. Um, in Cultural Revolution, the ordinary people participate in politics uh, not because they are they was interested, but was mobilized by the state and the government. So all these people, they actually they uh, they never met Chairman Mao they trying to promote uh, Chairman Mao's thinking because the state, the government, have a very strong uh, influence on, 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 on their daily life. And in this kind of political models, the ordinary people actually just some kind of uh, tool or device for the um, party politics. And as an artist, they have to work for the party. Um, for example, some artists, they have to uh, beauty, beauty, beautify the, the image of the leader using the very traditional technique without Photoshop. Sometimes they have to uh, create some fiction narrative about the history of the party. Uh, for example, Chairman Mao never met Lin Biao in, in Jinggan uh, Mountains, but the artist can put two images together and, and trying to tell uh, a story about, trying to tell the, the, uh, a fiction uh, story about the, the, the two leaders in, in the history. We also found, um, as the artist, uh, this like uh, Mr. Jing, Jing Mei Sheng, uh, he used to be a graphic designer to work for some uh, company. In 1930, he he made the 
the left uh, image, uh, the, the poster for the secret uh, company. But after 1949, um, he was commissioned by the party, the, the government, to make an image about uh, the farm, a woman farmer. Uh, so to compare these two different styles, one is very typical capitalism uh, style, another is a socialism style. However, he actually don't have his idea. He have to work uh, according the, the the party or the government's uh, request. So, as artist, uh, uh, he never um, uh, become independent and um, artist during this uh, party uh, politics model. And then in 1989. Uh, the student protests uh, for uh, democracy, but democracy is a very extra idea. Um, it's quite different from today. There's a lot of uh, 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 protests happen in different cities. The ordinary people just protest for their their property, their interest, because most of their property was uh, demolished uh, by the uh, government or the or, or, or the developer. So there's a, a, also a very famous uh, protest in the countryside in Taishi village in 2005, because the government grabbed the land from the from the village to to uh, for the urban development and with uh, without a good compensation. Then the village uh, was not uh, satisfied with the com compensation, and then they 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 trying to protest. And last year, we also have uh, the Wukan protest. The Wukan protest is very, for my opinion, is very uh, important protest uh, during the Chinese uh, political situation uh, today. Uh, it's. Uh, Although uh, even it's a small uh, protest, but it responds to the global protests from uh, Africa to the Occupy Wall Street movement. It make a, a big change in the political situation uh, in China, because the this kind of ordinary people they they participate in the politics just for just for themselves, not for the state, not for the government. So I call this kind of new model of politics as citizen um, politics. So um, this is a, a big process uh, compared to the uh, Cultural Revolution and the uh, 1989 uh, protests. So the, the, the Chinese political situation uh, changed a lot. How uh, artists or uh, intellectual can get involved in this uh, radical trans transformation of the society. Um, that is uh, my starting point um, to, to, um, to organize my projects. Yeah, we, we, we also can show some uh, uh, artists today. They actually, uh, it's more independent. It's, it's more independent than than the artists in uh, 1940 or 1960. Ai Weiwei is a very good uh, 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 sample uh, for the citizen um, uh, politics because he protests everything uh, not in the name of the party or not in the name of a group. He always protests individually. That is very important. If everybody can participate or uh, get involved in the public issue, I think um, the, the, social, the social change will happen in, in, in the future in China. Yes, this is a, um, a short statement I, I, I post on my blog to support Ai Weiwei. Uh, the main idea is to compare the, the two different kinds of uh, political model uh, from party politics to uh, citizen pro uh, politics. Then I, 
I I used to did two projects. One is the San Yuanli project commissioned by the Venice Biennale. It's about um, the urban village in Guangzhou. Then second, I I make a a, a, a research and document projects about the slum uh, in Beijing, the Dashlan area. Both of these two projects, um, I I spent um, at least one years and spend a lot of time to interview people in the community. So these two projects have very close connection with the reality. Uh, I'm trying to um, engage the people uh, to uh, participate in, in some uh, public issue. So at the same time, when I'm working as a curator, I, I will also try to make a different uh, thing uh, compared to the museum model or the Biennale model. Um, I always I, I always like to organize the exhibition in in some abnormal space, uh, like this uh, Get It Louder project. Um, we're trying to do it in in shopping mall. Um, it will be. I think for the museum model or the uh, Biennale models. Uh, the exhibition is always, uh, always for the art communities. It's, it's, it's mainly um, uh, the Get It Louder project is mainly for for those people who actually uh, didn't visit museum often. When they go to the shopping mall for shopping, they will they happen to see some objects which very different from the commercial product. Then they will realize, oh, this is an exhibition. So uh, we're trying to use this a normal space to, to assess more public, to uh, put more general public uh, in, in, into our exhibition. Then um, I curate the 2009 Shenzhen and Hong Kong by City Biennale of Urbanism and Architecture. Um, this project uh, also is very um, uh, for my for my opinion is I'm I'm trying to um, do do a, an, a biennale in a different models. Um, so the it's about Shenzhen and Hong Kong and Shenzhen and Hong Kong located in the, in the pole of the Delta. This area actually is the most radical. Uh, transformation area uh, during the past 30 years because Shenzhen used to be a fiction uh, village uh, 30 years ago, uh, 40 years ago and now it already become a very big city and and this kind of transformation still, uh, still uh, keep keep going on and and the the Biennale, the Shenzhen Biennale, I want to uh, try to find the driving force of behind this uh, radical transformation. Then I try to persuade the Shenzhen government to allow me to use the, the square in front of the government building as the main venue for the Biennale. You know, in China, every city uh, we will have a, a very big square in front of the government building, but it's only one fun uh, function uh, just for the political presentation. We know in Europe, the, the, the square, a successful square should mix together with some restaurant, uh, shop, uh, residence, and, but in China, most of these squares are, are empty because th this is only one fun fun function. So I'm trying to uh, persuade, I'm trying to use the Biennale event to uh, activate the, the space, to trying to bring more people uh, to the space, to use the space as a, a successful uh, public space. Then I was lucky and the government agreed to use the square as the uh, the main venue for the Biennale. You know, this is a, a huge challenge uh, for us to organize uh, a, a large-scale uh, exhibition 
in the outer, sp outer space. Then we commissioned um, uh, some young, younger um, architect group or artist group from all over the world to make some temporary architecture or installation uh, on the square. And all this kind of uh, uh, installation or temporary architecture, people can use it. People can use, uh, can experience the space uh, with their body. Uh, like this pavilion was designed by a very young uh, Netherlands architect, Good. Um, at the very beginning, they, they proposed to uh, this pavilion as a, a restaurant and, and, and a, a, a living room, but it's quite difficult to, to get the water and kitchen uh, uh, supplement for, uh, on the square, so we just put it as a, a reading space for the public. And we also um, have a French uh, architect to transfer the, the advertising billboard to a very playful installation for the children. And the, the Mexican architect group make a slogan, an architecture uh, with, the, with a word. So most of, most of the participating projects of Ascendant Biennale <coughs> is trying to engage the people to play with the, in, the installation, to participate in the space. This, this uh, piece by So Fujimoto is uh, it's talking about uh, the, the public space in Asia city. For his opinion, he thinks the public space in Asian cities is always on the move, always moving. So he designed uh, a working chairs to describe the, the, the public space in Asian city. We're also trying to, uh, uh, to bring the water inside uh, the, the venue. And so this Japanese architect uh, designed um, uh, 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 artifactual pool in, in, in the venue. And then, and then the people can, can uh, go through it and pray inside it. And this is a very interesting uh, temporary uh, structure by Chinese architect Liu Jiakun. It looked very similar to the instant city by Archigram in 1960. Um, he organized a lot of uh, bamboo chair from Chengdu, trying to set up a tea house in this uh, space. And also uh, a Taiwanese architect, Xie Yingjun, he mostly worked in the rural area in China. And for, for the Sendan Biennale, um, he worked together with uh, a Finland artist trying to build a, a, a structure with the bamboo in a very traditional way uh, to make a concentration uh, together with the uh, skyscraper. We also trying to realize some un, un, unfinished uh, projects by the Chinese artist Chen Zhen. We help his wife to to realize this uh, proposal uh, and then install in, in front of a shopping mall that a lot of uh, uh, people and children can, can jump on it. And this is a piece about the demolition in, in China. This piece uh, was, this architecture was built uh, with tofu. Tofu, tofu, uh, in Chinese, tofu jia gong cheng means some architecture uh, was very easy to broken. And this piece actually is a criticize the, the, the school architecture in, in the Sichuan earthquake. Uh, at the same time, we also uh, invite uh, Lim Kuhas and Hansu Orbis to organize the non-stop 
uh, interview with 30 Chinese intellectual and, um, and leading figures to the conversation um, <coughs> uh, focus on many, many topics uh, in China today. So it's a, a very uh, uh, interesting and very uh, good in, uh, discussion uh, from uh, a Western power, a point of view and together with the Chinese people. We are going to publish a book about this in, in, in May. And my second project uh, is the, the Chengdu Biennale uh, last year to accurate. Um, so the, the, the theme of Chengdu Biennale is to focus on the solution, design and social engineering. How uh, design can provide a, a solution for the, for the social uh, problem. And then we invite some very interesting uh, artists to 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 make make some very interesting um, projects. This project by a uh, British uh, artist Map Hope. You know, this kind of uh, exercise machine was everywhere in Chin Chinese city, and uh, Map Hope trying to uh, collect the energy from the body, and then transfer the uh, uh, energy to a power to provide. To provide the power for the for the lighting on the street, um, because most of this exercise machine was uh, uh, installed in some uh, in some uh, communities not without any lighting, so it's good to collect the power from the people's body, transfer to power, and then provide the lighting to make the security. Uh, uh, secure Security situations better for the for the people when they doing the uh, exercise. And the Canadian architect Adrian Bradwell uh, trying to do a, a tricycle market. You know, in China, the um, the the this this um, this. Uh, how to say the the small business on the street is always uh, forbidden by the city uh, city management uh, department. So this project is trying to provide a legal opportunity for them during the uh, Biennale to allow them to sell their products by themselves. And then we also have this uh, a Thai architect to de to develop a project um, that can that invite the public uh, use different tool and device to make their own design, their DIY design. The New York based architect uh, desire a huge installation trying to discuss the, the relationship between United States and China. And this is a very interesting uh, design by a Hong Kong designer. Actually, uh, it put coffee table, sofa, and bookcase to become a, a, a coffin. This is a very uh, typical Chinese design, for my opinion. So um, I organize. I mainly organize uh, some exhibition and uh, biennale in the city, but <coughs> recently I think. Uh, we need to find a new models uh, that is different from the from the uh, art system or or the, the the museum system, because today Chinese contemporary art actually uh, is getting more commercial. Uh, most of the most of them actually have 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 not so much connection with the reality. Artists, the Chinese. Contemporary artists uh, won't criticize anything. They just produce a lot of piece for sale. So then I decided to start a new project uh, in the countryside. Um, so this uh, the the, the Bishan village is located in uh, uh, Anhui. It's it's uh, it's very near the the Yellow Mountain, a very famous tourism uh, area in in Anhui. Um, 
And before that, I made a research about uh, the micro-nation, how, how people set up a nation individually uh, uh, in different play in the world. And I'm trying to do this, trying to set up a, a utopian in the countryside. Uh, you know, actually, the, 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 in 1930 and 1940, there's a very famous uh, Chinese intellectual. His name is uh, James Yan Yang Chu. Um, he started the, the rural reconstruction movement uh, in 1930 and 1940. And um, I would like to follow his thinking and his uh, protest and trying to uh, organize more and more uh, uh, artists, architects, designers, filmmakers, writers to work together with the farmer in the village. So um, I'm going to set up a, a commute in the countryside. And the main idea of the commute is based on ruralism and anarchism. Um, <coughs> we will, we will uh, decide, we will, we will uh, have passport and 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 the flag and and this is two uh uh two heroes um my two heroes uh uh YC Jamie Yan Yan Chu is the 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 pioneer for the rural reconstruction movement and Peter uh uh King is the master of the anarchism Then we decide the logo. Um, the book and pen means it's a uh, means intellectual people, and they they leave the city and move to the countryside, and trying to work together with the people, uh, the the farmer, trying to create more job opportunity for the people that can get people come back from city to the countryside, to balance the the conflict between urban and rural area in China. Then from last year, I organized, I invite a lot of uh, uh, people to visit the village, including uh, musician, architect, uh, designer, artists, writers. Uh, they, they, will, they make research in, in the village and trying to uh, work together with the farmer. Then we organized uh, the harvest festival uh, in in August last year. I invite about uh, one more than one hundred people from outside and to the country to the village, and it's about uh, three thousand village uh, participate in the harvest festival. And we organized an exhibition uh, to present some cooperative projects by the artists and the village. We also present some very old uh, photos we collect from the archive about the village. And, and the village like, like the photo very much because they can show some, some people when they, are, when they was young. Then we, or we, we organized a, a, portrait, uh, a portrait class for the young kids in the countryside. Um, this is a very old uh, tem temple. Um, since since a lot of people move to the city, the most of the public space of the village uh, getting empty. We're trying to uh, bring more and more literature or uh, music events uh, for this kind of uh, public space and trying to activate the uh, public life in the in the village. And we also <coughs> organize a barsa for the for the villager. The the villager can sell everything they want to sell, um, including some homemade uh, wine and some uh, some um, some products. And we invite the local people to performance, and together with the the outside uh, musician, we also have. Um, um, panel discussion uh, focus on rural China, on agriculture, on rural development, and of course we 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 are also organize uh, outdoor screening for the villager. 
So this is a more interesting experience for me to organize more and more cultural activity in the countryside. Um, so this year we we are going to uh, do the second one in November. Um, since last one, uh, the local government like it very much, so we can uh, we can get more funding. So this year I'm going to invite more more uh, inter international artists and, and people to come. So the the next project I'm going to uh, share uh, with you is about literature journals. Um, I found a new uh, literature magazine uh, from uh, April last year. Before that, I make I make some research about literature journals. So we have Chinese traditional literature journals uh, like People's Lit Literature Harvest. This all these two magazine was a government funded uh, magazine. So they have to. Um, um, they have to uh, have the political collection when they edit the contents. And there's uh, s uh, some new literature uh, journals by, found by uh, uh, the, um, very, the, the very famous young writer like Han Han and Zhang Yueran. But Han Han's uh, journal was banned when the first issue came out. Then we have we also have some uh, uh, journals from Taiwan and Hong Kong and the international uh, literature uh, journal. To compare the New Yorker and the Paris Review, we prefer uh, maybe Grantar is a, a, a better one. And Max Sweeney <coughs> from San Francisco, found by Dave Eagers. I like the the business model of um, uh, Max Vini very much because he, uh, Dave Eagles found different uh, magazines at the same time. He also developed uh, 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 a creative writing program for the young people, for the children. Uh, to <coughs> I believe he, he invented a new wave of the literature production because uh, he, he, he he trying to do many many different things and trying to put them together, not only just run a, a, a literature journal. Also, we got this N plus one from uh, Brooklyn um, and uh, Public Space. These two magazines, uh, uh, both of them based in Brooklyn, because in recent year Brooklyn in New York become a, a very um, active uh, area in New York. A lot of writers move to there, and they produce magazine. And M plus one is more intellectual. Sometimes they focus on some ac academic uh, issue. It's not only fiction and and uh, poetry. Then after the research, I'm tr trying to uh, set, uh, find a new one, uh, which will be different from all of them. Um, we. I call my magazine as Husper. Husper, um, it's a, a Yiddish work. It means you have you have got to to do something different. Um, then we we do this issue um, focus on agro Asia. Actually, it's a very core connection with my rural projects. In this issue. Uh, we invite uh, Alan Dadi Loi and some Asia, Asian writers uh, to contribute the uh, articles about uh, how the Asian in intellectual left the city, moved to the countryside st the, to start the rural reconstruction movement in Japan, in Thailand, in uh, India, and in Taiwan and in mainland China. The <coughs> The first issue uh, was printed and uh, in um, it's uh, thirty thousand copies and was sold out in two weeks, and this really a surprise uh, for us and 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 our publisher. Then we keep we keep on editing the second issue. 
Yes, um, for for the first issue, we has, uh, we also introduced some uh, uh, Western writing, like uh, Peter Hausler's book. This this book is very, I, I I believe this book has very the best understanding about China, uh, um, and before it was translated into Chinese, we already uh, published a review about it uh, on our magazine. Then second issue, we focus on the the, the, the science fiction, um, because uh, the imagination of the future actually have very close connection with the reality. Uh, during the past 10 years, there's a new generation of the science fiction writer uh, um, from China, uh, especially uh, Liu Cixin and Han Song, they, they they contribute a lot uh, to a, a new uh, science fiction and writing style. At the same time, we also introduced the the, the cyberpunk uh, writer uh, to Chinese people, including William Gibson, Neil Stephenson, Jeff Nun, and and put them together with the Chinese science fiction writer. And the next issue is about purchase. We want to look back to the, the protest movement in 1980 in China. Um, at, I believe 1980 is a golden age for, for Chinese um, contemporary culture. At that time, a lot of uh, po poets, they, they uh, lived together, uh, they found the uh, uh, underground uh, literature magazine, they share their experience um, <coughs> uh, uh, in different city. And, and also they create a very wide network in different city. So we, we're trying to uh, tell a story about 1980 for a younger generation today and to, to uh, tell the, the contemporary history about China to a younger, younger readers. For example, um, these uh, pictures actually um, was uh, took in 1980 in, uh, in Changchun. All these people was poets, but you can find one people who laying down is Liu Xiaobo. <coughs> Liu Xiaobo used to be a very active poet uh, in the poetry movement in 1980. But most of them now getting become a very, um, become a, a, a dri driving uh, force uh, to the, Chinese uh, politi politics and uh, culture, cultural transformation. And Bei Dao. So um, we also made a lot of uh, uh, documentary uh, interview um, with the poet with who was active in 1980 and upload to the website uh, and then <coughs> it will be uh, very helpful to for the hard copy uh, uh, contents. Of course, we also introduce uh, uh, brand new 2666 to Chinese readers. And the next issue is about uh, eros. It's we're trying to challenge the sensitive uh, issues uh, in China publishing industry. At the very beginning, we, we worry about this issue very much. We worry about it, it, will, be, it, it will be, it won't be uh, published, but finally, uh, it, it, it came out. So we published some fiction by this Western writer, and also developed some uh, uh, discussion about the uh, tech uh, uh, writing in contemporary Chinese literature and introduced this very update book by uh, uh, Nicola Bakers. This is a very interesting book. And the, the fix, fixed issues focus on the diaspora Chinese writer in the United States and uh, Europe. So we introduced Li Yang Li, the, the poet uh, uh, who live in uh, Chicago and and Ha Jing and Yi Yunli. 
I think both of these three uh, writers are now very well known in the Western society. Both, uh, most, uh, all of them uh, uh, write in English, not in Chinese. So they are very different from the uh, Excel uh, writers um, because they, they are, they, this not like the last generation of the Excel Chinese writers. They are in, uh, focused on the daily life of the emigrate Chinese people uh, in in the West Western society. And the update issues is about revolution. Um, this is also a very sensitive issue. We're trying to discuss the history from uh, Paris Camus to civil war of s in Spain from a uh, 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 Seattle protest in 1999 to, um, to the Occupy Wall Street movement. And at the very beginning, I, I tried to put a uh, Wukan protest in this issue, but finally, uh, we have a shell censor people in the company that do not did not allow us to publish that piece about Chinese protests. So this issue is totally about anti-capitalism. Um, for the for the st uh, structure of the the magazine, I'm trying to use the architectural idea to organize the contents. For example, uh, the entrance is mainly published uh, the porches, and the special space is uh, uh, is for the curated theme, uh, curated contents, and the regular space is is for those uh, articles which have no connection with the theme, and parasites is for the uh, an English comp companions, um, uh, uh, which in short in the main magazine. I'm I'm also trying to uh, develop some uh, crossover projects, which I <coughs> select. Um, nine finished buildings in different cities in China, and then commission nine writers, and each writer select one architect, uh, one building, and then they will contribute a fiction according the ar architectural space. Then we publish as a bilingual book. And then for the Chandu Biennale, I uh, invite uh, some architect. They select a book, they like it, and then they trying to uh, design, uh, trying to realize the, the architecture in the in the fiction into a model. For example, uh, the Chinese architect Wang Su select a, a, a short story by Burgess, the Library of uh, uh, Babel. Then he he design uh, he make the models um, for 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 the book. Okay, this is this is our English companion, uh, paragraph. Uh, because you know, uh, actually, the Chinese contemporary literature actually do not have uh, too much opportunity uh, to publish in in international society. What we can do is is uh, trying to translate some of the writing from each issue uh, to translate into uh, English, and and. We buy them together with this uh, companion with the magazine. So far, we already have six issues of the English companion. Of course, we 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 are <coughs> we we trying to develop the 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 web space contents, which is different from the hard copy contents. So the the our official website is mainly about the literature. News and also trying to uh, including the the event we organize. We we upload a lot of videos, uh, which we in interview uh, the the writer and poet. So we almost we organize a lot of discussion the 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 old life event um, to uh, to do focus on different literature topic. And this is the conversation uh, between myself and the, 
the uh, the, the editor of Granta. And we just or organized uh, uh, conversations about the revolution together with uh, Scott Lash. So <laughs> in the future, I'm trying to um, trying to uh, do more things uh, on on the on the literature um, production. I'm I'm going to found uh, a, f a literature festival in maybe at the beginning of next year, and we are going to develop some uh, writing class, and we are going to do some uh, book published in the name of Husper, and I hope this can realize in. Uh, Two thousand, two two thousand, uh, f uh, two thousand fourteen, maybe <laughs> in my timeline. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Hello. <laughs> well, thank you very much for this. Uh, great introduction to your work. I feel we could make a, a series of lectures of every aspect of your work, from film, from architecture, from curatorial project to literature. But you finish your lecture with the future, so I thought maybe we start from there. <laughs> um, I thought it was uh, uh, quite daring to start a literature magazine now, and uh, when you s announce a print run also, it's very impressive for European standards to have a literature magazine that has a print run of 30,000. I mean, uh, two days ago I was talking with a novelist from France and they were saying a bestseller in, in France is 60,000 copy for a book, for a novel. Uh, in the Netherlands, I think the this year the biggest print run was 200,000, but it was only one book. And uh, <laughs> who achieves this? Well, in average, it's uh, very low. So here it seems more that publishing of literature is declining, magazine is declining, and you start now uh, a, a hard copy uh, magazine, not an online version. Um, and so if you could elaborate a bit more on this, why you got interested in literature and the birth of the magazine. <coughs> because I, I used to be a poet when I was very young. Uh, I stopped writing poetry uh, when I was 16 years old. And after I did many, many things, I, I decided to go back to the literature scenes. And at the same time, because there's a, a very popular young writer, Han Han, he, he found a literature magazine and, and served very, very good. And, and this uh, interesting my, my box, Thomas Sao. Thomas Sao is, is the owner of a very big media company, Modern Media. Uh, he published more than a uh, fifteen magazine, popular magazine, and then he he decided to support my idea to to found this uh, Husper uh, uh, magazine. Um, I think for for Thomas Sao, he he uh, was interesting in the market. Actually, literature have very good market, I believe, but. I I remember when I, uh, Dave Eager uh, used to sit in one of his uh, the the Max Vini. Actually, in United States, the the book business keep keep going up, but everybody think literature should not have a market. But um, since the 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 Husper magazine, uh, we found actually literature have have market. That's true. I I believe like. Kafka, uh, it's a long-term market. Uh, for example, Kafka spoke and sell very, very long times, right? So we we uh, we all agree that we should we should do the uh, literature magazine. Maybe for my boss, he was interesting in the market, but for myself, I mean, I, I just want to go back to the literature scene. And and about the the, um, the format of the writing, like for instance, uh, it's a lot of very short stories or short novel. Uh, you could have start a publishing house with novels, but you start the magazine with short stories. Is this something that is privileged by uh, young writers uh, as a format? Um, for for Husper magazine, so far we only can publish the the, the short story because our space is not enough. Um, but no world, no, no world has um, a, 
uh, a better market than short story. I I just um, um, because I just I'm going to participate the London Book Fair. I I know if a, a Western uh, publisher want to translate uh, a Chinese writer's book, if you select a novel, never try the short story. Uh, short story. So now most of the Chinese writer, whatever young or old, they trying to write mainly novel. And uh, we see a lot of uh, bridges that you build between the architecture and literature, or previously you went from design to cinemas, and uh, it's a kind of uh, very uh, unique uh, way that you relate to art or understanding art in a very broad sense, that it can be anything from uh, literature to architecture to film. Um, and um, is, is this... Um, is there a community of artists like working in the same way than you in in China, or are you very singular in this ap approach or understanding of uh, art at large? <laughs> <laughs> it's a I, I think I, I, I was really no, no. when when um, actually not that much people like uh, for example I'm uh, um, 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 I mean I uh, they don't like people when you was uh, artist and then you happen to be an um, uh, 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 architect or curator. I mean, the, the I'm actually I'm very alone uh, to, 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 I mean, to do some, to this kind of uh, crossover uh, projects. And maybe some people will say, when I, when I'm working on architecture, they, they, s they say, oh, owning is not educate uh, as an architect. I think he no, not so good uh, architecture. Some of it, somebody will criticize uh, this uh, me, but every time when I am trying to start an, uh, to start go into a new field, I'm always trying to make a lot of research and trying to get the very professional uh, stand up. Uh, then I I I am just. Uh, I don't know um, when, when the Shenzhen government commissioned me as the curator for Shenzhen Hong Kong Biennale of urbanism, just because I did the open research projects uh, about San Yuanli and and Da Shilan, then they think uh, um, maybe I can handle the the curating job for the the Biennale uh, of Architecture. And um, you said the project of uh, uh, the Bishan project was very dear to you, and you said it's a micro nation. Um, what type of government runs this micro nation, <laughs> if any? <laughs> no, actually, it it should be uh, uh, com com commune. It's no government, no leaders. Um, everybody live together share everything together. It's very utopian, um, but it's quite difficult to realize it in the realities, uh, in, in, in the real work. Um, <coughs> especially in China, this kind of topic is very sensitive. I could imagine. Yeah. Uh, for example, I'm, I'm really, uh, uh, I, I really like the anarchism idea, but when I, when I talk about anarchism, I just I can't speak uh, in Wu Zhengfu Zhu Yi because this this is a very um, sen sensitive uh, term in China. The government don't like uh, Wu Zheng, uh, anarchism. Anarchism uh, Wu Zhengfu Zhu Yi means uh, without government or anti-government. But there have been like a historical example of uh, commune in China or. Uh, no, um, I think uh, maybe in in at the uh, at the beginning of 1980, there's uh, some art artists like the Stark Group. They trying to um, uh, practice some s similar idea, but not really happen. Oh, there's a there's a there's a, um, a, a art communities in in the early 1990. Uh, in Yuan Mingyuan, 
a lot of artists they live together um and sh uh, in 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 Yuanmingyuan in a uh, a village uh, in the suburban of Beijing at that time it's it's quite like a commute but what i did is quite different from this mm. I, I mainly focus on the countryside yes because I mainly target uh, the, the many targets of my the, of the Bisan project is focus on the rural reconstruction. It's not about art system, not about not about artists, uh, not about the self organization of the artists. And how did you? C was it through film or the documentary film that you made that you got interested in this uh, uh, more uh, ruralism, as you call it, or how did you come? To, uh, to be really so involved in this? Uh, yes. Um, in 2003, when I commissioned by the creator Ho Han Ru to participate in the uh, Venice Biennale, then um, um, I decided to make a research about San Yuanli, the urban village in Guangzhou. Actually, it's a very typical urban research project, but I thought when you when you look at the urban village, actually the problem is mainly from the countryside, because the agricultural uh, 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 did not develop, and all the people have to move to the city to make living. But the people from the countryside, when they go into the city, they cannot share the the public resources. And and they can only live together in the very low cost community like urban village. Yes. So it it's when we when we look at, at the Chinese city and found its mainly problem actually is caused by the countryside. It's a it's a two sides of the same question. Then I I I become uh, very interesting in trying to find the 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 real reasons of the of the countryside of the relationship between city and countryside i also believe the 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 topic of the 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 topic about urban and rural area development is the most important topic uh during the last 30 years because the urbanization process actually is very very r uh, radical Organization process actually is um, to uh, redistribute the social resources. Yes, it, it's radical more than a revolution. Yeah, because the 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 government the government are, um, for example, the city government grabbed the land from the countryside. Yes, actually, it redistributes the land, and then make some group. Some so uh, some group like farmer is not so s not s satisfied, and then they trying to protect. That made a lot of uh, po social problem. Yeah, this is an ongoing uh, process all over China in this appropriation of land. Yeah, and uh, maybe we'll take some question from the audience. Uh. Uh, hello, um, I was wondering in. Um, how far you can be explicit in the plans that you have in formulating your ideas uh, towards the government. government. Um, you have to phrase them uh, like wha what will happen in these uh, projects. And you, s you already mentioned, uh, you can't mention the term uh, anarchism. So, um, and, and obviously your, your projects are very critical. Um, so how do you negotiate um, phrasing or rephrasing your intentions in these projects? <coughs> that is a very um, um, interesting uh, question. Uh, you know, uh, we often found a very the huge difference from our idea and the government's idea. But uh, we, I, I, I have to say I'm, I'm I was very lucky when I started the Bisan projects in the countryside because I met a very good local governor. And this guy, he know the his history of 
the rural reconstruction movement in 1930 and 1940 very, very well. So when I start to talk about my idea about uh, this project, and, and he totally get very excited. And then I also told him uh, a good local governor is more important than a central governor, especially in China. In Chinese means, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, in Chinese, uh, then he, he liked this very much. <laughs> so uh, uh, he his support uh, our, our whole projects. Um, sometimes we, uh, we I, also, I, I often criti cri criticize uh, the, the local government because in the, in the village, um, <coughs> there's a lot of old, very beautiful old uh, buildings, the Hui style buildings. Uh, which have uh, more than 400 years old. And the local government just um, just trying to develop the tourism. So the only one economic model is tourism. But you know, tourism is it, it's not so good for our, our agricultural area. So we're trying to, we, I of, often criticize this kind of tourism econom, e economic model. We, I'm trying to persuade the local governor to develop another kind of uh, economic model. For example, we're trying to uh, make some design, new design for the local furniture uh, design system and, and trying to p produce uh, new products uh, according to the traditional technique, but with a new idea, and then we can uh, and sell it to the people in the city. Um, so he he often uh, uh, agree it uh, with us. So so this year, um, the local government is going to uh, sponsor us with a, a very good funding. So I'm 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 going to invite more and more international people to participate in this project. Uh, it was very lucky. Uh, maybe in another place, um, this warm happen. Hi. Yeah, my question actually continues on what you told us now, because uh, in your project with the, for the Biennale on the big square, do you think the government uh, also used your connections with or your uh, ideas about um, with the, the connections with the Western world to uh, promote China as a country? Uh, the Shenzhen government actually had very wide connection with the uh, Aki, Aki, Aki star. I mean, they o often organize a lot of international competition to invite some very big name architect office to participate in the competition. So, um, it they they don't need myself to provide the the the, the connection for, uh, the, the 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 network for them actually they the central government is quite smart and very open mind um, what I I think they need need some need my thinking to to um, to make the the Biennale better in a, a new and different way. From past ten years, Shenzhen organized a lot of inter international uh, competition. They commissioned a lot of international architect to design the public building there. Um, do you feel that all these international uh, events um, create opportunity to uh, have more artistic um, uh, freedom, really? Uh, and if so, in what rate do you think this is developing in China? Um, how to say it? Um, I have to say uh, we have more freedom today in China to, to do what we want to do. Um, but there's a huge gap between different ideas. 
especially the artist idea and the government idea. The artist idea and the develop the business the develops uh, per idea is totally different. The 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 most diffi difficult things is how to um, have a, um, a common common sense. How to how to get different idea to uh, can work together. That is very difficult for. For example, when I when I start the the, the BSM projects in the countryside, all the village think we are doing a business project. When when they see the tourist tourism bus, take a lot of guests to visit their village, they think we are making a lot of money. But actually, this is a non-profit project. It's very difficult for us to get funding to develop these projects. But you know, the idea in the village, they they have a, a very strong influence from the main street uh, idea. They think uh, everybody they come here just f just want to make money. If you can bring more money for us, you you are welcome. Otherwise, they could not understand what you are doing. That is the the main problem when when we start this kind of uh, rural projects. Um. You talked about one of the major changes in China being uh, the change from party politics to citizens' protests. And is that individual uh, protests? Because um, I, I do some research on Occupy movement. Then a lot of comments we get is, you should organize as a party, otherwise you won't be successful. So I'm wondering if in China it works differently, that yeah, the individual protest is becoming more stronger. I I don't believe any party uh, for my uh, myself. I think if if one party take place another party, it ma uh, m make no sense. I mean, for example, if now China there's a, a Chinese Democracy Party, right, as an anti-communism party. If the Chi China Democracy Party Take over the power from the community party, it will it will be the same. It it will, it will, it will make no difference. So uh, for myself, I believe to to engage the social change, we really need to do it individually, not in any group, not in any party. We don't need the political agency, if we have something to speak out, we just speak by ourselves. We don't need uh, agency, politi political agency. If we want to protect something, we just take the direct action. Um, that is what uh, I, I, I really like Ivy uh, um He is very good example for the individual um, political model. Yes, so thank you for your uh, lecture. Um, I have a very naive question, I think, um, but I will ask it anyway. Um, you talk about these communes in the countryside of, well, people living together, sharing. Um, how is that different from communism? Actually, anarchism, uh, uh, communism has come from anarchism, right? Uh, it's, a, 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 it's about um, it's about sharing, share, sharing something. Um, uh, um, for my opinion, um, for I really like the the original communism idea. It's it's very good idea. Um, but when when it was protest in different country, it got a lot of uh, problem. It uh, that is why um, mm, when when I when I uh, got to know the the Creative Commons uh, idea, I really like that idea. Creative Commons actually is a a, a, a legal method to. Uh, to engage the people to share the knowledge 
property. This is a very communism idea in the digital age today. Uh, but if but if the if you you want to share the real property, that will be difficult than the uh, intellectual property. But um, anarchism it's always uh, can can maybe can realize in in small area, for example, in my village. But it's too difficult in a in a a, 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 a state level or, or a city level. It's not impossible because the the party politics and uh, the idea of the state is so popular today in in the whole world. Nobody believe uh, you can. Uh, organize your life without government. So that is why we want to uh, go to a very small village, village trying to do it in a, a very small scale, in a very small place. Maybe it will be impossible. Uh, maybe it will be impossible to, to realize it. There's a very interesting book uh, uh, by David uh, Graeber. Uh, he he make a research about uh, um, how some uh, village in different sit in different uh, place in the world how they can uh, how they develop the gift gift economy gift economy that mean uh, the gift economy can um, organize the society without the currency without any money and. He f he finds some sample from the East East society today. That that was a very good um, book. I, I I just saw the cover. Yeah, this book. Uh, it's about anarchism um, today. Uh, I I'm really amazed by so many projects you works on regarding to the political and uh, social issues in China. Uh, I think the Bishan commune project is very interesting, uh, but it reminds me um, this hip commu commun commune or society in the 70s in West uh, uh, country. How do you react on that? Because uh, that similarity is people share everything, people uh, have a have a utopian dream. Is that also your utopian dream to escape the Chinese reality um, from this capital uh, capitalism driven um, current situation? Um, that also reminds me um, uh, Chairman Mao's Cultural Revolution in the 60s, uh, because he also say at that moment intellectuals go to countryside, work together with the people, work together with the farm, learn from that. How do you react on that? That's totally different from uh, <coughs> when Chairman Mao uh, engaged, uh, modi mobilized the young people to the countryside because there's no job opportunity in the city. If there's so many young people keep staying in the city, that will make a big problem for the city. Then Chairman Mao decided to push all the young people to the countryside to transfer the social comfort uh, in uh, 1970. It's a solution for the city problem. But today, everybody want to move to the city. Nobody want to stay in the countryside. And, and now, uh, we trying to uh, mobilize the people to go to the countryside. Um, Actually, in the big city in China today, you can find some idea like anti-urban uh, uh, idea is growing. For example, some people, some people, they, they, they don't. For example, if you live in Beijing, the air quality is so bad and the traffic is so bad. So a lot of people want to spend a weekend in the suburban of Beijing. Why they can't? Uh, leave Beijing and move to the countryside because there's no job opportunity in the countryside. That is why they can't move to the countryside. If we can create more job opportunity, then I believe more and more people can 
can move to the city. If you can provide a job for them, then they they never want to live in Beijing. Okay, um, I think one of the things about China is to have multiple ideas at the same time in your head, all these contradictions and trying to make sense of them at all times. I mean, it's such a vast country. Um, thank you, Uning, uh, for your wonderful presentation and Delphine for your moderation and print room for your partnership. Please join us for drinks. Um, we're going to be outside. Please sign up also for our newsletter if you haven't been here before, if you want to come back. We're actually looking at different aspects of cultural activism vis-a-vis -vis economics in the next few months, uh, starting with Big Van Der Poel and Jan de Pavert's partnership, um, every ma everyone to themselves on May 12th. I think what Uning showed us tonight is more cultural activism via using the system. Maybe it's the market, maybe it's the government, if there's a way to actually do that. And these are the discussions we're going to keep bringing up, especially in the you know, upcoming cultural climate and the current climate actually in Netherlands. And then whatever is going to happen in uh, May and September, we're all waiting for some decisions. Uh, so it will be interesting time to continue the discussions, what is happening in Europe vis-a-vis -vis what's happening actually in China and find more comparative readings. So in that sense, let's give a uh, applause um, to Uning and Delphine.